Like San Francisco, dude, if I was a woman, I would be rushing up there. There's just such a need. If I lived in, like, there's so much wealth and no pretty girls. What a fucking incredible place. I wish there was a guy, place like that That's for guys. Oh, wait, there is. It's called... Men and women have the same IQs. They're both about around 100. The difference between men and women is that more women sit inside the first standard deviation. That's between an IQ of 85 and 115. There's more men than women outside the first standard deviation, which means the dumbest humans alive right now are men, and the smartest yeah. humans alive right now are men. men. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys understand yeah. that? Yeah. So that, that's where things are a little bit different. What I've found is that when women, they have the intellectual horsepower or like the neural uh, ability to c conceive of things like astrophysics and quantum mechanics, but they just aren't curious about it. That's what I found. It's like proclivities. Pro the proclivities to, to like be curious about. Mm -hmm. I am a man, and I'm a former U.S. military officer. In general, my whole belief is I need to solve problems to make my life better and my friend's life better. I need to provide for. Like I have a nephew. I want to make sure that my nephew can go to any college he wants, and I want to make sure that's already taken care of before he gets to college age. Mm -hmm. I'm here to try to solve what would be called adaptive solutions or try to find an evolutionary problem. I forgot what Dr. Men, Buss was. Men are deductive problems. Correct. Okay. By so nature. because of that, I need to be curious on how to build a sales funnel, how to hire a sales team, how to do live streaming. Do I use Restream or do I do StreamYard? Do, how do I use Zoom? How do I pay my taxes? I have to solve problems. I am always in a problem solving mode. Women a lot of times are just really fucking pretty yeah. and get a lot of fucking attention all right, and all they right, don't have the right. same adaptive problems they have some problems the problem is how do i get my makeup on in time to make it for this date and i'm not saying that's the only problems but you don't have the same necessity especially if you're very attractive you have two issues going on you don't have the same adaptive problems number one and number two the amount of stimulus that each one of you women get on social media is one hundred thousand times more than me oh yeah definitely. do you understand privilege. and so because and of that privilege is definitely because of that your necessity to be curious again i'm saying you're just as smart as us but your 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 necessity to be as curious as, uh, as us to solve problems might not be the same thing. And so generally, when I have co conversations with women about the NFL, astrophysics, inflation, the real estate economy, or whatever, I just find that it's about 10 times as many men want to have those conversations with right. me as women. women. Mm -hmm. It's not an insult to women. It's yeah. just something that I found to be true. Because in all those cases, <laughs> when I talk about finance, when I have those conversations, it is generally women who don't even know the first thing about Ain't them. nobody got time for that. <laughs> exactly. So that's the thing. It is because women are not curious about that and I think in in general it's because women are not adaptive obviously women are problem solvers I had two female squadron commanders when I was in the Air Force but in general they are not problem solvers the same way men are and so it's not that women are dumber it's that they are not as curious about solving problems as men do are in general and if they were then I would have a lot more conversations with women about building sales funnels and and what my KPIs are and shit like that but I have none yeah I would argue I, would, I mean I could say if we're talking in general generalizations, I could maybe say that, but I think it's also, I work in tech and I work predominantly with men. I'm usually like the only female in a meeting and I'm usually like 10 to 15 younger, 10 to 15 years younger yes. than everyone and else. And I'm sure they look at you but, like, this is crazy and you're an anomaly. I'll bet you it, three standard sure, deviations sure. outside the norm. Mm -hmm. But it's also one of those things I would, I would argue, I think a real reason for that. And like, I do agree, like men naturally have the desire. Like if a woman goes to a problem, it has a problem and goes to a man, his first thing is to Solve provide a, provide a solution. Show, did you, did you do good in school? Yes. Did you do good in primary school and high school? Are your parents educated? No. They're not? Did your parents have high IQs? Probably not. Yeah, not probably not? No. Okay. Uh, what I was going to say is it seems like you have a, a, a high IQ, mm -hmm. and so because of that, you are more adaptive for problem solving. It's not necessarily... Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. And like to, to a point where it would have not made sense for you to just be a pageant model and not do anything else. Yes. I, I think what, but one part of it, though, is it's, it's also like in, in the environments that I'm in, I see men that and isolation, I think, is a huge reason for a lot of these things. Because like if you're in engineering, if you're in computer science, I mean, I have coworkers that sit down at a desk and don't talk to anyone for 12 hours a day. And like, men, I think, are able to You cleaning up up there. There um, are no attractive women <laughs> in Northern California. You guys didn't know this? <laughs> like, go walk around San Francisco and it is f***ing terrible. There's a bunch of girls who live here in Vegas. And you know about this? They go strip up in f***ing SF. Yeah, and the dudes are all like DECA millionaires. Lulu, and they haven't seen yeah. a pretty girl in like f***ing months. And these girls are like leaving with the bag, bro. 10, 15K One leaving out of strip clubs. Oh, the women in SF it. are hideous. I've been it dancing is, lately. But yeah. your Fisherman's <laughs> Wharf, the most expensive real estate. <laughs> the most Cow's expensive. Hall, Cow Hollow. Yeah. yeah. The most expensive real estate in North America. Mm -hmm.
I'm just kidding, Fisherman's Wharf. More expensive than Chicago or New York. So much wealth. And then yes. women who probably who look like you, unfortunately, are shamed for looking like you do in that oh, part. Yeah. Again, you admit it. Like San Francisco, dude, if I was a woman, I would be rushing up there. There's just such a need. If I lived in, like, there's so much wealth and no pretty girls. What a fucking incredible place. I wish there was a guy, place like that for guys. Oh, wait, there is. It's called Las Vegas. A place where there's just nothing but pretty girls and there's yeah. not as many guys. I use this example. What, what hand do you use? Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed and dominant, but I can be. You can be ambidextrous yeah. a little bit. Are you anybody left-handed? You're left. I'm I, know, I know you're left. I know you're left. Are you left? Anybody no, else left-handed? Ambidextrous like her. Okay. Right. If he's left-handed, I can teach him to sign his name with his right hand. If you put enough training and and oh, did, yeah. the only it, reason why I did like that is because if I ever broke my right hand, I'd want to be able to use right. my yeah. right. Right. I <laughs> did break my left arm, and that's so, why I started so, playing that's football. Right right but, but here's the thing: is your natural proclivity it's, is to use your right hand but because I'm that's the way I'm that's goofy. the way your because that's the way your brain is, right? right. But I could train him to to write his sign his but name you know with that, his with his right hand. You know that th when I'm doing this, it's mm -hmm. actually crisscross. Like when you're thinking, it's like the oh yeah, left that's that's right right my brother's ambidextrous as well. So I write with my my right hand, but if I were to say lose lose usage mm -hmm. of my right hand I would eventually figure out how to do it. now it's yeah. not as natural for me because I was born with a brain structure that that brain. favors my right hand right so similar to what, what, what with men and women men and women have different innate natural proclivities can sure. can you teach and condition a woman to do certain things that men can do yes you can yeah. but it's not the natural proclivity for that woman so like uh, one of the other example I use is like uh, most like when a, when a child a male child when a boy, boy is very young he has he can throw a rock with more force and more accuracy and put his shoulders into it because it's a natural thing for 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 males for human males right now can you teach a girl yeah, if she's at a the same boy. age to be to be a, a little league pitcher yes yeah, you yes. can but the boy is easier to train and teach than it is for the girl to Not, do that because no, of the natural I don't think proclivity so no because oh. i was sorry, the, i was sorry. the number one discus thrower in the province mm -hmm. of canada in track and field and i was a tomboy as uh, and it's there might be a more natural proclivity for you to want to be more like masculinized like that exactly. but the boy is still going to naturally be able to throw a ball and like we say this like when it, when you throw like a girl that's where that stereo that's where that stereotype kid. comes from i was beating boys on, in sports all the time <laughs> until i was in Me college too. did you have a did you have a father that showed you how to oh, do definitely all that daddy's girl big that's time it. and i have an older brother 10 years older than me taught me how and to beat boys up so yeah no i think i think to your i taught myself everything so mm -hmm. there's no yeah. way. I think to your argument, natural pro proclivity for it, it's also the environment. Like like I said, I work with guys who work 10, 12 hours a day and don't mm -hmm. talk to anyone. I don't think, I don't know many women who would want to do that. And if their right. natural proclivity is to do this right. and they could make just as much money doing something that's social or this, right. is this something why would that they you, want did to Did you train, like, did you go to college? Did you train for this job that you're in right now? I did, should say yes, pageants, but my did job did not system my, train you up for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Not, your, your, not the pageant. Your platform wasn't Silicon Valley working with shockingly nerds. Shockingly, no. no. <laughs> shockingly not. Queen of the nerds. No. Yes. <laughs> so the other, the other thing is, and that maybe this is also more to your point as well, is if you don't know a foreign language, for example, mm -hmm. if you don't know Spanish, you go to Mexico or you go to Spain, you will learn Spanish. Yeah, because absolutely. Because you are immersed in it. So the yeah. environment that you're in, if you're immersed in what you have to do, you will become proficient at it, at least up mm -hmm. to a, a up to a certain definitely point. but like going back to your point how you mm -hmm. say men are problem solvers i think it's also the environment that teaches them to be that way right. and for women mm -hmm. sometimes you someone know, will say oh, i got you i'll uh, help you out um, i'll do this for you and then the woman's well, like well ah. I, I think genetics would teach them that way like because mm -hmm. men were problem solvers fifty thousand years ago the men were generally the ones hunting and building mm -hmm. things and stuff like that so i think men were inherent problem solvers in fact i think the highest <laughs> version of homo sapien male existence is to complete tasks with other men to accomplish goals. Mm -hmm. That's why the most yeah. watched television program in the world is the Super Bowl. <laughs> we yeah. watched groups of men accomplish goals together. I think that is a homo sapiens in their highest form. Mm -hmm. That's Proxy how we build for war. We build <laughs> we build skyscrapers together and we put people on the moon together. Yes, we did put people yes, on the moon. Yes, we actually did. We did. Put <laughs> on the moon. Uh, we do all those things. So that's what I think that's why I think the difference is, but I don't yep. think it's cultural. I, I definitely think it's genetic yep. because if it was cultural what you'd find is some untouched, you know, Native American tribe or something where men were not innate problem solvers and there is no tribe. Like all in every every culture of human existence well it's Men like there's it's indigenous can, now by the way find, politically correct not native 
you can, you can, well, no, um, you can still be native. native it's like, yeah, yeah, you can still be native yeah. to, to, to a certain location. I was going to say right. for like innate proclivities, that's, that is a genetic trait. So it's like your personality, your ability to say, be a musician, for example, your, your, like people, we call it like a natural gift. I believe I have a natural gift for, for music and being creative and stuff mm, like that. I, yeah. I do. Um, the people who become like masters of a certain art, they have the natural innate proclivity for that. But if they don't live with like a family that is really pushing their their music or their art or whatever, or they don't live in a society or that makes it better for them, a better condition for them to sort of flourish and to become that you know reach their peak potential, mm -hmm. then yeah, they, it's not that they don't still have that potential. They do. It just never is maximized because it's not in a condition or it's not in an environment where it is. So for example, if like you look at like uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, if you look at his family, his family he comes from music so yeah. he, so that natural proclivity for being a, a master musician comes out eddie van halen right his both of his uh, his parents were, were musicians as well same thing so the innate talents and the gifts can come out and make a make a true master out of that person that doesn't mean that people can't have that that same proclivity it's just that they're not in an environment that actually allows them to sort of like uh, to trigger those to trigger that so you yeah, to flourish those things or to activate that. true 